Good morning and happy Saturday morning to each and every one of you. It is now time for our First Baptist Church of Toronto, Pennsylvania's Thought for the Day. And as we always do, we welcome the Holy Spirit's presence. We absolutely know he is in the midst of us and certainly he will be leading and guiding us through this snippet of God's word. And on today, I'm excited because these are scripture texts that we are pretty familiar with, or at least the general idea of what happened in these texts. We have walked uh, to a place where Moses and Aaron are dealing with Pharaoh and trying to get the children of Israel uh, released from the captivity of the Egyptians. And so the very uh, first thing we did was we saw that the Nile River was turned into blood and we learned from um, that particular scenario on last week to let God do the fighting for us. That was our thought for the day and prayerfully it stuck with us in some form or fashion throughout the week. Today, we're moving to the second plague. The second plague is the plague of frogs. Now, as I mentioned last week, what I'm really excited about is what is going to be pulled from each of these events. Um, of course, we are familiar with the plagues. We've dealt with them before, we've seen them before, but certainly we are looking to hear what God would speak to us as the thought for the day. And certainly he has given us a thought for the day. So let me get to the scripture text. Today, we are going to be focusing on Exodus the 8th, chapter verses 1 through 15. I know it's a lengthy reading, you guys, but there's no way to work through these scripture texts um, on the plagues without reading the entire text. It just doesn't make sense to do anything less. So please bear with me. Exodus 8, starting at 1. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, thus says the Lord, let my people go so that they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go, I will plague your whole country with frogs. The river shall swarm with frogs. They shall come up into your palace, into your bed chamber and your bed, and into the houses of your officials and of your people, and into your ovens and your kneading bowls. The frogs shall come up on you and on your people and on all your officials. And the Lord said to Moses, say to Aaron, stretch out your hand with your staff over the rivers, the canals and the pools and make frogs come up on the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. But the magicians did the same by their secret arts and brought frogs up on the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron and said, pray to the Lord to take away the frogs from me and my people, and I will let the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. Moses said to Pharaoh, kindly tell me when I am to pray for you and for your officials and for your people, that the frogs may be removed from you and your houses and be left only in the Nile. And he said, tomorrow. Moses said, as you say, so that you may know that there is no one like the Lord, our God. The frogs shall leave you and your houses and your officials and your people. They shall be left only in the Nile. Then Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh and Moses cried out to the Lord concerning the frogs that he had brought upon Pharaoh. And the Lord did as Moses requested. The frogs died in the houses, the courtyards, and the fields. And they gathered them together in heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was a respite, he hardened his heart and would not listen to them, just as the Lord had said. Amen for the reading and the hearing 
of God's word. Now, when I think about Moses and Aaron going over to the palace to see Pharaoh on this second occasion, they had to be thinking to themselves, surely it will work this time. How many times have we been in situations where we have been uh, downtrodden or uh, burdened with some sort of problem that we've taken to the Lord in prayer or that we have been led to address or deal with in some form or fashion that we've said to ourselves, self for sure is going to work this time. And, and our faith was engaged, you all. And we were just so certain that for sure, for sure this time it was going to work. And so when Aaron and, and Moses went back to the palace, I know that had to be in the backs of their minds because it would have been in the back of mine that this time, this time he's going to let them go, uh, let all of us go, because this is the second time we've gone to him and for sure it's going to work. And so um, they did exactly what God told them to do. Let's never forget that our obedience is required. That certainly if we expect a miracle, we have to obey like we expect a miracle. Can I just say that again? If we expect a miracle, then we need to obey like we expect a miracle. And so Aaron and Moses did just that. They did exactly what God told them to do. And Moses, as the leader, he directed Aaron to hold out the staff. And he spoke the words that God had given him to speak. And assuredly, uh, the plague fell just as he said it would. The frogs were everywhere. When I think about the scenario and what was actually going on, it had to be horrible for the Egyptians. They, these frogs were literally everywhere. They had come up out the water. They were in the palace. Um, never would a pharaoh allow an infestation in the palace. He would expect the servants to keep that place clean. So there's an infestation in the palace, in their bedrooms, the bed chambers, in their beds. Oh my goodness, you all. Can you imagine going to get in the bed and there's frogs in your bed? Enough is enough already. Um, certainly, I, I don't want to fight against a God that's coming after me in that way. And, and certainly, Pharaoh, he kind of felt the same way, like, uh, this may be a little more than I'm willing to deal with. But see, the way Satan works, the magicians were able to create the same scenario. They were able to multiply the frogs. Now, I'm sure, and, and the word doesn't tell us this, so just this is a Brockism. I'm sure that the manner by which the frog infestation took place at the hand of God versus these magicians were different and distinct. And, and the reason I think that is, first of all, because I know God. I know we serve an awesome and a powerful God, and certainly he, gon', he can outrun Satan on any day. But in addition to that, if the magicians were able to do the exact same thing that Moses and Aaron were able to do with the help of God, then why did Pharaoh feel compelled to go talk to Moses about getting this all to stop? Shouldn't his magicians have been able to stop it all? I mean, they had, quote unquote, the same power as what Moses and Aaron had brought to the table. So that that clues me in that something different uh, was present in Moses and Aaron's plague than what was in the plague or in the reproduction uh, by the magicians. As another side note, certainly Satan is a master duplicator. I know most of us who have been in church for many years have heard that said before, but watch what goes on in these plagues. Uh, certainly, Satan is a master replicator, except it will not be as powerful. It will not last. It will not stand the way God's move stands. So we got to be careful and, and watch 
and, and, and assess who's moving, whether it's God or whether it's Satan. But that's, that's for a different thought for the day on a different week. When Pharaoh went to Moses and asked him to pray, Moses had no problem doing that. Now, I can only imagine that Pharaoh felt, I don't know, less of a person, less of a king, you know, having to go to Moses, but he did what he had to do because he was miserable. And Moses was willing to pray. Please, ladies and gentlemen, be willing to pray. Be willing to pray no matter what's going on. And, and recognize that what we saw here was the power of prayer. That once Moses prayed, everything went back to normal. Everything went back to normal. And Moses even said to Pharaoh, I'm doing this so that you can know that there's no one like our God. Oh my goodness, you all. We need to be praying, praying for others praying in our various situations, praying that other people may come to know that there is no God like our God. I think I'm going to preach that one day. There is no God like our God. Amen for that. And because of the prayers of Moses, absolutely everything went back to normal. Yeah, it stunk. Because there's always going to be some sort of residual effect to sin. There's always going to be something left over to remind us of the sin. But certainly being delivered is being delivered. And we praise God for deliverance. I know I got to let you all go because we try to keep these messages down to 10 minutes in the morning on Saturdays. In spite of all that occurred, Pharaoh's heart was still hardened by God. Pharaoh's heart was still hardened. So the fact that Aaron and, and Moses may have been thinking to themselves, surely it will work this time. It did not. But let's stay tuned because they didn't give up on God and we shouldn't give up on God either. Let me give you the thought for the day. I didn't forget. Our thought for the day Pray for our oppressors. Mm. Pray for our oppressors. It's not easy. It's not something that on the inside we necessarily want to do. But when our oppressors are under attack, and usually it's because they're messing with us, we still as Christians are tasked to pray for them. No, don't sit up and say they're getting what they deserve. Get them, God. He's not some sort of butler that we can sick on people anytime that we feel that we're being wronged. Our job as loving Christians is to pray even for our oppressors. That's our thought for the day, you all. Pray for our oppressors oppressors. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word this morning. We thank you that you have allowed us just one more week to learn from your word, one more Saturday morning to seek you through your word. We thank you for Moses and Aaron and Pharaoh and even the frogs on this morning. We thank you. Heavenly Father, our prayer is that as we go through this life and we feel attacked and we feel downtrodden, we feel beaten upon, that we would never forget that we ought to always be praying so that other people can know that there is no God like our God. And those prayers do include prayers for our oppressors. Even those who are doing us so wrong from day to day, month to month, year to year, we ought pray for them. Cause us to not have vengeful spirits, Lord, but spirits of Christian brotherly love, the spirit that you have birthed in us, that we would indeed pray for our oppressors. We thank you, Lord, for this day and this time, and we pray that you would bring us back safely together, Lord, on next day week. Amen. Amen. And a man.